Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 94. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. Don't know how many times he's been on. Reintroduce yourself to the audience. What's going on, good people? It's your boy Smooth from the GFT Radio Network. You know, catch us every Monday at 10 p.m. Also, uh, the Fans Perspective Sports Show every other Sunday at 9 p.m. So, here with my brother Hype. I think this is our uh, second go round. Second go round. I think this might be the third or the fourth. I'm not yeah. sure. We'll check the archives and we'll have it down. Yeah. There. <laughs> <laughs> but shouts out to my man Smooth GFT fam in the building. Now let's make a classic. Another one. All right, yes, you got to hit the rundown. Every Monday, 2 o'clock, E-Block Radio Network. 2 o'clock, GFT Radio Network. 2 o'clock every Tuesday. Wednesday is 216 to blend. 12 midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Thursday, WTNUPhilly.com, 12.30 Friday, I say podcast radio network, 10 a.m. Saturday, THC Media. THC does not have anything to do with weed. People who keep asking me about that. That's not what the situation is over there. Um, but it's 10 a.m. every Saturday on the THC Media. Now, how to hustle live show. How to hustle live show. This is the third how to hustle live show. Make sure y'all get y'all tickets. The posters is up everywhere. The tickets is out. The QR code is on them. So if you don't get with me directly for me to get you a physical ticket, then you scan the code and you can purchase your tickets off the Eventbrite. If you want a physical ticket, I will hold you down and we will get you a physical. But you have no excuse for why you didn't copy your tickets before the show, after the show, or however you'd like to make that situation. Just make sure you are in the building March 12th at the bar, 4901 Catherine Street on the 12th. Doors will be at 6 o'clock. The show will start at 7 o'clock with or without you being there. Make sure you get your tickets, though. Tickets are $15, and we appreciate all donations and all love from anywhere, anybody you know, who wants to send something international hype's way. Okay, my man's moving the building. Shouts out to the Monday shows, the hashtag join the conversation situations, because I plagiarized the hell out of that episode the other night. <laughs> I got about 12 topics, okay, out of the 20, 25 minutes I was on there. I will be shouting us out every week. When I say, hey, this is one of those plagiarized situations that I had, I always tell people, I'm a habitual plagiarist, but I will give you your credit when you have some. <laughs> I don't remember specifically who came up with this one, but like I said, every Monday, GFT Radio Network, you get on the Twitter, you get on the YouTube, the Instagram, you get on the Facebook, you can join the conversation on any of those places and catch us every Monday at 10 o'clock. We be live on there, in the chat, and all Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Now, this one came out of that situation now. Should there be one thing that is a relationship deal breaker? Smooth, talk to me. Yeah, there, there's definitely one thing that can be a deal breaker. I don't care, especially if it means something to you. You know, we always hear about the uh, 80-20. Mm-hmm. Like you find a person, they got 80% of what you need, but that 20% is glaring flashing lights because you're not getting <laughs> exactly then you, get a, you get the 2080 but they giving <laughs> you that 20 that you never was getting copy yeah exactly so with me and and and, and i mentioned this on the show money management is important to me like money management is something that's real important to me i can't be somebody with somebody who is just real lies they fear with their with their finances you know, it ain't about how much money you make. You feel me? I've been with people who made good money, but they was horrible with their finances. You feel me? Because that'll put you in a hole. And coming from somebody who lost everything before twice, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, 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 get, and got back on my feet and prospering at the moment. Like, I just can't. That's, that's not a situation I can put myself in. I can't attach myself to, to a woman who, who, who doesn't, uh, who have money issues. And when I mean money, like I said, money issues, it is about making money. It's about how you use and, 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 and deal with your money, how you handle your money. You what feel me? Your That's habits? What are your habits? What are you prioritizing? What are your exactly. spending habits? You exactly. can have, just because you got $300 in the bank don't mean that you can spend $250. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is yeah, the type absolutely. of thing that you're talking about. Absolutely. And, and, and I, I, 
when, if, if somebody tell was to tell me, I don't know your opinion on it, but like one thing couldn't be a deal breaker. I, like, I, I, I just can't fathom why not? Because it, it all depends on what that one thing is. Like I said, you never really know someone. You never really know someone uh, until you live with them. Until you live with them, yeah. <laughs> you feel me? So you could be, everything could be beautiful, you know, in the courting stages, in the early relationship stage. But once you move in and you see how they live, how they function, when you're not around in the dark, then it's like, okay, now you got to start piecing things together. If, if it's not conducive to how you live, then like, nah. Like, I, you know, I can see something. You know, another one that I think, too, that people never think, if you get in a car with somebody and they driving, mm-hmm. you find out a lot about the person then. Because is you short-tempered? Is you trying to jump in front of everybody? Is you just weaving in and out of traffic? Is you too focused on the music? Is the music going to stack? Like, <laughs> all of that type of stuff tells you, like, a lot of little things about the person. And you be like, yo, you want to slow down? You want to stop pulling up on the bus? You want to stop trying to jump in front of the bus in the bus lane? Like, exactly. Yeah. And then rudeness. Like, I also mentioned rudeness. Like, I don't like a person who looks down on people. Cause that's not that. Nah, I mean, like that. That rubs me the wrong way. Don't like we at a restaurant and you treating a waiter terrible just because they're a waiter, not because of poor service, but just because their position. You feel me? Like I like to say, I forget who said it, but you know, you treat the CEO just like you treat the janitor with the same respect. You feel me? As far as Copy. You know, as a human being, you feel me? You show them the same respect. It's you know, and if and if you can't do that. You know, because I've been on dates. I've been I've been with women who look down on certain people because of their situation. You feel me? And like that, 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 because <clears throat> them tables turn. Them tables turn and they could turn quick. So don't be looking down on somebody when you could be in that same position tomorrow. So like that always rubbed me the wrong way. So that's like, like that's a huge deal breaker for me. That's a huge deal breaker for me. All right. Now for me. Uh, my thing was, this is what I said on the show was, it always came down to who going to be at that table doing their homework with my daughter. And Absolutely. for me, that's a lot of your personality traits. It's how you carry yourself. What type of person is you? Are you the type of person who, if I'm not there, I'm comfortable with you speaking for me? And that is definitely a deal breaker because everybody can't be at that table doing that long division, doing that science project. Everybody doesn't have that mental capacity, that patience, the nurturing, and all of those things that go with it. So I think one thing is definitely, uh, one thing could definitely be a relationship deal breaker um, Mm -hmm. for any of us, because it's like you were saying, it's all about what's important to you. If this thing, if this thing is giving you back to the 80 20 situation, but this is 60% of what I like. You know what I'm saying? No, I can't get over the fact that you're doing this. If you smoke Newports, I can't get over that either. I said that one too. No Newports. Only smoke I want to see coming out of your mouth is if it's hawking outside. All right? Like, and, and like, if you, I like, can't deal with no Newport breath, no Newport kisses. Like, what are you doing? And I can't deal with a drunk neither. Like, yeah. I, can't, like, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like drunk women. I don't you like bad, I don't like bad decision making. Now, if we're in a situation where this is a party, let's have some fun. Because we're having fun doesn't mean that we got to make bad decisions, though. Exactly. You know at this stage of age in your life, where is the limits and where should you go and where should you not go? I was working at one job and the young boss, like, he looked a little beat up. He said, yo, you good? He said, nah, my birthday was yesterday. I took 21 shots. That sounds like a horrible decision. Yeah, like, that's the type of shit you do though when you're 21. You're not yeah. 21. You shouldn't be taking 45 <laughs> shots because it's your birthday. No, exactly. like, exactly. and once you hit 37, you shouldn't be doing that type of shit. All right, Word. I had, need to rec- we need to recognize those type of things. I had a conversation with a with a friend of mine, a female friend of mine, the other day, and it was along these lines. And one of the things that I I I, I should have mentioned this too was indecisiveness. You brought you. You made me remember when you, when you were saying you want somebody to be able to sit at the table and help your daughter with homework. I can't stand indecisiveness. I need I need a woman. You, you know, they say uh, a man's supposed to lead, right? 
And I fully wholeheartedly believe that. But I need my woman to be a leader as well. You, you understand? Because if something happens to me and we got a family, I need to know that she can hold it down and make, like you said, yeah. the proper in, situ decision. in those situations where you're not there, you're not always exactly. going to be able to be there. And my man told me this about uh, like his aunt. They had one of them old school relationships where his uncle took care of everything. His uncle ends up passing. His aunt don't even know how to pay the damn electric bill. Yeah. So like you can't be like a I don't need like a super dependent, but yeah, you got to have some type of leadership qualities because I'm not always going to be able to be here. Mm -hmm. And now I want to take it here. The person who's listening to this and says, all right, well, if the person has all the qualities that you're looking for and they don't have these, this one spe specific thing, even though it might be a big thing to you, or if they're willing to work on it, is that a thing that you can, is that a thing that you can go with? Like she don't know how to manage the money, but she's open and honest about the fact that she don't know how to manage the money. I, she's acknowledging that. Cause you know, some people will fight you too for nail about like, I, I don't need no help with this. Like, yeah, but you don't got no money and like yeah. six bills is due. <laughs> what do you mean you don't need no help? Like, exactly. exactly. I'm what fair. about that situation? I'm fair. You feel me? I'm fair. So if, if I can tell she's honest and genuine about making an effort, to improve whatever it may, whatever the issue may be, then I'll give her a chance. But once, you know, if if it's not a unlimited time, like I need to see those changes almost immediately, you know, and consistently. You know, you can't just change for two to three months and then you right back to where we started from in the beginning. You feel me? Like we're not doing that. <laughs> you feel me? I'll be out the door before you can say. Before you can say bye, I'm gone already. You know, you just took, that's exactly where I was going to go. Consistency. <laughs> if you say I'm going to lose 20 pounds, I'm not expecting you to lose that this week. But I'm expecting you to be <laughs> eating better and hitting the gym. So even if, like, I don't even really want to put a timetable on it. Because you'll kind of, like, it's one of those things where it'll kind of happen naturally if it's going to happen. Because mm -hmm. it's like, you'll see that, all right, she's not eating... She's not buying lunch six, five days a week. You know what I'm saying? You cut it down to three. So you're working on the situation. This was another thing, a topic I did maybe two, three weeks ago was why don't people work on themselves in the relationship? We need to both be honest about what our shortcomings are if we're in a relationship trying to grow and build our situation. I got to be able to say, yo, look, I'm not good with the money, so you manage the money. Yeah, I got to be able to say, I, I'm not good with the homework, so you help the kids with the homework. That doesn't absolve you from doing it, but it lets the other person know, like, look, I'm open. I'm willing to be honest with you about what the situation is. And 90% of the time, most of us just don't want to accept the circumstances of what we have. And we're looking to make that other person this perfect situation, this perfect thing that they are not. So you come into this situation already defeating yourself because you'd be like, well, she didn't hit all the check marks, but like some check marks are bigger than others is what this whole conversation really is. Absolutely. Some Absolutely. things are like, right, we can work on that. And some things is just like, oh no, we can't work on that. You're a thief. There's nothing to work on. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, I don't want to hear about your reform thief. I'm cool. Like, <laughs> and like the rudeness, back to the rudeness thing. Like that's a character flaw. You feel me? Like that's a real character flaw. So, but like I remember this too. Like I said, that goes back to like you drive. If you driving with somebody, you'll catch all of that because you gotta be having so many different people. You are gonna catch so many different things on the e way with somebody driving down the street that you are gonna see all of those type of things. Exactly. Exactly. Don't that that might be that might be one that I'm not willing to compromise on. I gotta be honest. The rudeness, the uh, you know, what I mean, the looking down on people. Because I'm going to immediately, I'm going to immediately look at you a, a certain way. You understand? Like, I'm like it ain't, like, that shit going to be instant. Instant. And you're going to feel that vibe coming off you. Here go another thing that you always throw at the person who says, well, I always, I, I gotta, I always say what I feel, or I always got to speak my mind. Well, do you also take the time to listen to the things you need to listen to? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just because you want to say some shit, all right, you wanted to say some shit, but you also got to be willing to listen to some shit. There's no relationship where it's always going to go your way. There's no relationship where everything's going to be perfect. 
in any of these relationships. We're talking mother, son, father, son, father, daughter, however you want to break that shit down. It's not always going to go your way. You don't always have to say what you, it is that you feel like you need to say. Maturity is when you understand there's time and place for me to say and do certain shit. <laughs> That's you wisdom. Say. I was just about to say that. Wisdom yeah. will let you know, you know, if, if you experience, because I've been through it and I've learned that sometimes some things are better left unsaid. I don't have to speak on everything. I don't have to uh, have an issue with everything. I learned that being a dad. You feel me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> to my daughter, like sometimes, you know, just let her be. You feel me? She ain't hurting nobody. She's not hurting herself. Let her enjoy the moment, even if she may be a little bit too loud. You know, one thing, uh, I remember Cat Williams, uh, he had a skit when he was like, you know, how can I get mad at my kids when all they doing? is having fun, enjoying life. He's, he's like, I mean, I'm supposed to stop them from having fun and enjoying themselves. I thought you was going to hit the joint. Why are you hollering? <laughs> <laughs> the DMX <laughs> joint. <laughs> but but that's, but that I, I apply that to everything. You feel me? Sometimes I don't, you know, just bite your tongue. Compromise. You feel me? Because that, that's what a relationship come down to at the end of the day is a little bit of compromise. You're not supposed to just forget your morals, forget your foundation, what you stand on. But in order for things to work, you got to be able to communicate first and compromise a little bit. You understand? I'm willing to compromise, but some things are just a deal breaker from the door. You know, and like I said earlier, people are real good at hiding who they are, who they truly those are. Rep those representatives, boy. Those some people hold up them. Some people can hold that representative up for 15 years. Word up. <laughs> Word up, bro. Word up. You know, and that that's how we, and we come across that with, with, with our friendships. People we grew up with who we thought was a solid individual. You know what I mean? Then when that pressure was applied, they, yeah, they you know what I mean? Folded they, like they tissue folded, paper. Like tissue paper, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, damn. So relationships with, with the opposite sex is the same way. You feel me? Like, she could, you could think everything is on the up and up, and then one day that truth will be revealed. You feel me? Because she, she can't hide it forever. She can't hide it forever. And but that's that's the oh man, that 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 hurt me worse if I gotta find out something years down the line about because I'm too old. <laughs> you feel me? I'm too old to find it like. You a trash individual six years from now. I'm gonna be highly upset. That'd be the problem with the representative, though. If you would have presented to your true self to me at the, from the rip, then like, damn, I could have made a strong evaluation. Now the women will throw that back at you when they say, "Well, if you'd have told me that you was fucking these other three girls. I could have made my <laughs> own assessment." Copy. I mean, I understand that. That's why you know what I'm saying I carry things the way I carried them back when I was in my backsliding days. Uh, now, this one I'm going to throw at you. Was there ever a time where you said, all right, because this isn't that big of a deal to me, I can't compromise on this to be in whatever relationship? Be it, uh, be it with a woman or without a woman, because like it could be like, all right, this nigga is not the type of dude that I normally would have hung with, but he cool enough. Like, so it don't even have to be just in a physical uh, attraction type of relationship. It could be any type of relationship. Man, that's a... Because uh, I can give you one for me. Since I this yeah. wasn't on the docket, you know what I'm saying? Paid talent like myself. I like to, get, <laughs> like to catch niggas off guard and catch them with something. Yeah, that's you know a good saying? question. Sturdy. <laughs> for me, it was, it was religion. Because me and my wife had had so many different conversations before we got married, before we got in a relationship about what if we had kids? How will we handle Christmas? How are you going to handle Ramadan? How are you going to handle fasting? How are you going to handle church, Juma? All the different things that will go into that situation. Because we had talked about all of that and came to an understanding, my aunt and my uncle been married for like, oh, probably like 30, 40 years. So I had them to bounce these things off of. I had them to use as an example. I had them to look at a template for how this thing could work. Mm -hmm. So that once I got into that situation, because you always got to be paying attention, everything I always tell people, everything is a topic. If you're paying enough attention, you can draw a topic out of anything. And 
me looking at that showed me that okay this can't this can be a thing that works even though it's not the ideal situation that you're looking for okay i, I can give you same situation my that's why i said let me go for let me go first and now bang you give me one my daughter's mother she was a uh we go back all the way to sixth grade right me and her mother but you know time lapsed we didn't see each other for years and then we reconnected and when we reconnected she was more you know christian she was just real jesus jesus freak you feel mm -hmm. me and you know me me and islam like a jesus freak it ain't just that she was just like a christian she was a jesus freak you understand mm -hmm. like everything just referred back to that so when we reconnected it wasn't initially on some anything romantic it was more so we used to debate you know and it was never hostile it got intense but it was never hostile i'm talking it wasn't about malicious yeah, it wasn't malicious That's the, thing. Wasn't, the most yeah. people when they had them conversations they can't not personalize it and that'd be exactly. the problem with them conversations. It'd be like, so you're not even learning this stuff so that you can strap yourself with a, with your own belief system, whether you're a Muslim or a Christian, because I hate Muslims who do this. You learn these things so you can argue with me. Exactly. And not so that you can pick up any knowledge that's beneficial to yourself. You just want to have a counterpoint to whatever it is that they're going to say. Go ahead, though. Exactly. And with, with, with that, I knew, you know, she was, she, she was, she liked to help kids. You feel me? My my youngest my youngest sister uh, went to the community center that she ran, that my daughter's uh, mother ran. So I knew she was there to help kids. You know, she got a good heart. You know, and like I liked her so, at the time. So I look Do back <laughs> doing that at the time. I heard that because uh, I caught it. Uh, <laughs> quick jab to the ribs. Ah. <laughs> we are cool. We cool. But, uh, you know, so at the time it was like, all right, I can look past. And, and even she had doubts. You feel me? It wasn't just on my end. It was on her end as well. You understand? So, you know, we compromised with each other. We compromised. And at the time, I thought it could work. And that really wasn't the issue that, that, that we didn't fall, that we fell off. It was more so you seen how somebody act when they were, were under pressure. That's that. That's what I seen how she reacted when we was under pressure, and I couldn't deal with that. But as far as I, I did make that compromise, I did. You know that was something I was willing to work with. Will I do it today, though? Will I do that today? Whew. Oh man, like she got to be a hell of a woman, bro. I, 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 <laughs> scar tissue that scar tissue that built up <laughs> yeah bro because because it's a lot it's a, it's, it's a lot if, if, if communication isn't what it should be if communication and it's hard what, I, what I've learned in this dating cesspool out here is like communication is is lacking like people don't know how to properly communicate communication anymore. is lacking because how many people have real conversations exactly and that's going to be a problem with the generation of, that's coming out was this shutdown kind of is really going to like fuck things up in another like 10 years. Mm -hmm. Once them kids who've been antisocial, never really been around too many people. Some people kept them in the house a little longer. Some people pushed them right out the door. Also like stuck in the house, staring at the tablet kids is like, how are they going to communicate? You sitting right next to each other, texting instead of actually holding that conversation. The good and bad thing about us growing up is we ain't have none of that shit. So you had to go talk to the girl. I had mm -hmm. to crack on you when I seen you. I couldn't go. I'm already following on the gram. I just slide her DMs later. Like, what are you talking about? She right there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Why you want to wait till you could text her something so she could not mm -hmm. probably see it or block you? Or like, she right there. She going to say no? All right, copy it. I tell my friends all the time, like, what's the worst thing somebody gonna say? No, I'm cool no. with no. I heard no before. <laughs> like, now I'm about to go at your girlfriend because you said no. I don't exactly. even want her, but I'm just being spiteful. <laughs> like, and then one and one another thing I learned is like honesty. Like they don't. 
they don't know how to deal with honesty. You feel it makes them feel uncomfortable. People don't like honesty. Is uh that's just that's a whole nother topic. So I really don't want to dive too deep, but yeah. people like to be reassured. They don't want to hear really hear the truth. There's a certain <laughs> way there's a certain way to deliver that message, but you also again the person who says I gotta say everything that I want to say, do you hear everything you need to hear? There's mm-hmm. a way for you to deliver that message, but if the person that you're talking to is not receiving that message at all, they already like you're just talking about the whole religious thing. If I make any points about Islam, if you're a super Muslim versus super Christian, if I make any points about Christianity, you're not listening. If I make any points about Islam, you're not listening. So there's mm-hmm. no reason for us to sit here and have that conversation because all it's going to do is turn into us attacking each other. That ain't a conversation. A conversation is when you say something, I listen and try to go off of what you're saying. Not, I already know what I'm going to say, and I don't give a fuck what Smooth is saying, because I'm making this point. That's exactly. not a conversation. <laughs> exactly. And that's the thing that most of us don't know how to have these days. Exactly. That's why I always say, talk to your kids. Talk to them goddamn kids before you send them out in the world and they don't know how to say shit. Because I'm not looking to hire them to a job at H2H cleaning, <laughs> roofing, plumbing, HVAC, and flooring, carpeting, all of those good things. Cleanups, cleanouts, you get with us at H2H cleaning only on Instagram. Um, I'm not looking to hire them. With the non-communicating ass, yo, did you paint the wall? I text him, yeah, because send him a thumbs up emoji instead of the, the fuck is you doing? Like, can't have that type of can't have that type of love. Yeah, and that's why I always bring communication up because, like you said, when we t- we talking about deal breakers, one thing that's that's another thing right there. Like, if if she can't properly communicate, we can't talk to each other. And come to some understanding, like you said, we're not always going to agree. You feel me? We don't and have to agree. We have to respect each other, though. We have to respect that's each the, other. That's the situation with me and my wife. There was a certain amount of respect there to where those this, those things that you don't agree on aren't as big of a deal as long as there's respect there. Because if there's respect there, you're not going to take it but so far. You're going to respect the other person's opinions, thoughts, ideas, and how they got there. As long as you can explain to me how you got to whatever thoughts you got, we can agree to disagree. But if you have no explanation for how you got there, oh, yeah, I'm cool. Um, You said something before. Let me ask you something. You said something before, like uh, a person has to believe in something for you to uh, rock with them. So let's say before your wife uh, and you met a girl, and she was agnostic or an uh, atheist, that would be a total deal breaker for you? I'm cool. I deleted your number before I even turned around and walked away. <laughs> because for me, I believe that uh, Islam was the best decision for me, was the best choice for me and how I'm going to live my life and the way I'm going to carry it. If you don't believe that, my wife can't take her shahada from me. It's what I tell people this all the time when they ask me this. So how do y'all make that whole situation work? She can't take her shahada from me if that's not what she believes. But mm-hmm. if you don't believe in, I would rather you believe that the paper is something yeah. versus you don't believe in anything. Because if you have no belief system and you don't prioritize any of those type of things, then you probably gonna make too many reckless decisions for me to be around. And once I got into the dating situation, like I said, with my daughter, everything came about. So how can I have you, or are you potentially somebody that I can have at that table doing that homework? And if you're somebody who doesn't believe in anything, then no, I can't have you at that table because I don't want you. Again, I'm not always going to be there. Like you said, like you had said this about the leadership qualities. I'm not always going to be there. They're going to follow your lead if I'm not there. And I don't want you leading them down this path or whatever that is. I mean, if that's what you're choosing to do, copy. You know what I'm saying? We don't got to argue about it. You ain't got to explain it to me. But I don't want that situation for my kids. Now, if my kids decide to choose to do that once they get to a certain age and stage, then copy. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. I ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. as long as you're of age where I'm making these decisions for you, they both got prayer rugs. Uh, see, I, see, I rock with that. I rock with that. I'm, I'm the same way. I can't... You said it perfectly. If you don't have some type of belief system I don't, I can't see how you, every person that I know, they ain't got to be into religion or that, but they still believe in something. Something still, you know, when it, before they make it. It it, it gives you you a moral compass type of thing. Yeah. Exactly. That's the way. Because you're going to be too reckless if you don't. Yeah. Exactly. And 
as you just said, if something happened to me, I have to trust that you will lead my daughter correctly. You feel me? And that's big for me. That's big for me. You know, I, I like, so I, a atheist, it's like, mm, like, nah, that's, that's, that's a complete, complete deal, but in an agnostic, complete, complete deal breaker for me. And if you are atheist, or a, a, how do you say it? agnostic? Yeah. If you are one of, if someone you who are, don't know what, you know, I mean, they they unsure. You feel if me? You are, if you are, uh, fall under one of those umbrellas and you are listening to this episode, one, we appreciate you hitting the button. Two, if that's the decision that you made, I'm not personally attacking that decision that you made. What I'm just telling you is you couldn't have ended up at the table doing homework with my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> that's all um, it is. That's all it is. Yes, yeah, <laughs> you know, it ain't, it ain't personal. Um, now, before we close this one out, I noticed in the rundown, pay attention to everything. You did not mention at a King's Truth, oh. your blog. You did not yeah. mention that. So, talk a little bit to us about the blog before we close this situation out smooth. Well, the blog uh, started off with me just writing poetry. Uh, I love poetry. I love spoken word. Uh, that's, to be honest with you, it saved my life. So, because it, it, it gave me something to, to get my feelings out, to get those those weird way for you to express yourself exactly so i decided to start a blog i was influenced by uh our co-host and and leader uh sunny from the gft radio uh back in 2011 uh she had she had her blog and she told me i should start one so i started that and on there now you can catch my poetry uh i got interviews i did i used to interview a lot of local people a lot of different podcasters uh, bloggers, uh, people who are doing positive things in the community. You can check those out. Uh, politicians, uh, you can check those out on there as well. Uh, sports, uh, you know, so everything's on there. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to revamp it to, 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 to update it to, to currently. And I got more poetry because I've been writing a lot. I just haven't been posting. So I'm going to start posting my poetry more on there. And uh, hopefully get back to the interview because that's something I, I enjoy doing, uh, interviewing people who strictly do positive things for the community. Uh, that, that's that's big for me because it's too much negative. We shine so much light on the negative that happens in our community. We don't never celebrate those who are doing positive. So that's one of the things on my blog. I was I was proud about that. Uh, you know, I got to interview people that were doing positive things. That's two things. One, definitely shout out to Sonny. You can have sex with Sonny every other Friday. You know what I'm saying? Twice a <laughs> month, you can have sex with Sonny. DMs are wide open, y'all. Slide. <laughs> <laughs> but More Than a Dad, shout out to More Than a Dad podcast. They was on two weeks ago, and that's their whole thing about putting a positive light on dads who are doing good shit in the community or with their kids and all of that type of shit. That's why I fuck with them. It's because they're shining a light on that situation that nobody shines a light on. Uh, before we wrap this episode up, though, this is the thing that I'm throwing at everybody now when we close the show out. When you hear my name, somebody say, yo, you know the boy hype, what is it that you think of? Ambition. Ambition. Ambitious. And ambition. Uh, bro, be get, bro, get to it. You feel me? Uh, it's crazy that one of the first business I ever started was called Legal Hustle. Uh, yeah. you know, throw a party. So when I hear you with your uh, how to hustle, I, I get the utmost respect because right, it's, it was it's a all, custom hustle. On if you watch <laughs> you feel me? And it's all and it's all uh, legal. You feel me? And, and positive. And it's and another thing that comes to mind is intelligent. Through all our conversations over this period of time that that I've getting gotten to know you, you feel me? I I respect intelligence. Somebody who can articulate themselves, you know, and, and and not just articulate their self for profit, but you know what I mean, to teach as well. You feel me? I've learned stuff from listening to you how to state your opinions, and I, and I respect that. So whenever I can have uh, those conversations with you, you know what I mean, I, I respect you checked on me when, <laughs> you know what I mean, certain things was going on, you feel me? I remember one time we was doing a pod and you could just tell by, by how I was moving during the pod, my facial expression, 
Boom. I look at my phone. <laughs> bro, like, you good, bro? You know what I mean? So that let me know it's genuine. I respect it. You know what I mean? So when I think of height, I think of somebody that's ambitious, that's intelligent, that's respectful, and that's genuine. Um, I appreciate that. That's one thing I always do. I, you make me think when we have conversations. Because when you say shit, I love the way like that you can articulate and explain it. Like I said, if you can explain what you think to me, all right, I can respect that. I don't have to agree, but I can respect it. I can respect that you took the time to... This was one... Of, I don't know if it was you or Willie said this on the show. It was like, don't get mad, just improve your argument. Me, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. That was you? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> that was one of them things that I took, and it was always like, it's improve your situation. Always get better. Always be trying to do more homework on the situation. Never just settle for what's on the base level and dive into that. That was something that I got from you. I told you that a couple of weeks ago when we was doing the show that you made me look at certain shit like that. And I respect, like I said, because I got a certain level of respect for you. I took that and ran with that and I got that from you. So shouts out to you. And it's one thing I don't like that we all do. Like when we got group texts and somebody say something is going on. I don't want to throw this shit in the group text because then it's kind of like it's kind of like noise if we're all just going, oh, damn, prayers up or whatever the situation is. If I got your number in this group text, then I got your number. And I don't have to hit you right now because everybody else is doing it. I want to hit you when it ain't the whirlwind of everybody. The problem don't even be the day of the funeral. The problem is two weeks from now, a month from now, three weeks, three months from now. You know what I'm saying? When those things are still alive, well, and kicking. And like you said, that week when we was doing the show, yeah, I can tell something ain't, something's up. You know what I'm saying? Because I know I pay, I pay attention to everything. Everybody has a certain way that they interact and, and they are on these different shows. And if I see something, I'm going to say something. And if you tell me, nah, I'm cool, that just means you don't want to talk about it right now. Copy. We can check on this in three days because it's still <laughs> going to be there. But um, I appreciate you coming on. I had to tap in my, my man on the last minute joint. My man told me, no doubt, give me an extra 15 minutes and we can make that happen. So, appreciate you coming on, bro. That's episode 94. We are, get your tickets to the Hot Hustle Live Show. Hot Hustle Live Show. Hit the link in my bio. Absolutely. Out. I'm going to be there this year. <laughs> Shouts out to my man. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.